When I first heard of getting things done, I was skeptical. How could it possibly live up to the fanaticism of its cult following? But once I saw the power of the next action of someday maybes and of organizing tasks by context, I knew there was a good reason for the hype. GTD works. More than 15 years later, GTD still helps me stay productive and in control of all of the things going on in life and work. GTD has helped me write three books, build a business, and move to South America. I regularly reread it, and I always find new ways to apply its principles and techniques. Here's my getting things done book summary in my own words after many years of practice and two podcast interviews with author David Allen. This is Love Your Work, and I'm David Cadavy. First, the principles of GTD. Now, these are not the principles as expressed in the Getting Things Done book. This is my summary of the most important ideas that are the basis of getting things done. One, trusted system. Two, appropriate engagement. Three, close open loops. And four, bottom up. One, trusted system. GTD is your trusted system. This is the most important idea behind GTD, which is to get everything out of your head and into a trusted system. Now, what is a trusted system? A trusted system is a system in which you can trust that you will engage appropriately with everything in the system. Now, what does it mean to engage appropriately? That brings us to principle number two, appropriate engagement. Your trusted system helps you engage appropriately. GTD handles a wider breadth of things than your typical to-do list calendar combination. Because GTD helps you engage appropriately with everything. Now, what does it mean to engage appropriately? That means you're doing no more and no less than is necessary to achieve your goal. You can trust your system will remind you to buy cat food only when you're physically capable of buying cat food and before you run out of cat food. You can also trust your system to hold ideas that you may or may not act upon. If you daydream about moving abroad, you can trust your system to hold that idea and remind you periodically so you won't forget to do whatever you do or don't want to do about that. So GTD handles everything from important tasks that must get done to fleeting thoughts that you merely might want to do something about. Principle three, close open loops. GTD keeps your mind free of open loops. Build a trusted system that helps you engage appropriately with everything and your mental energy will be free to handle whatever is going on in the moment. This is because your trusted system keeps your mind free of open loops. If you can't trust that you'll buy cat food before you run out, you'll be thinking about it. If you can't trust that you'll revisit that idea about moving abroad, you'll be thinking about it. You'll have open loops in your mind. These open loops use mental energy that you could use on other things. These open loops also make you feel like a victim of the things you have to do. It's demoralizing to keep reminding yourself Something needs to get done because you're also reminding yourself that you haven't followed through. If you trust it will get done, you don't have to remind yourself. As David Allen says, your mind is for having ideas, not for holding them. Principle four, bottom up. GTD is a bottom up approach to personal organization. By getting control of the ground level things in your life, the little things, you have more energy to think about the higher level things. By trusting that you'll buy cat food, you have more energy to think about how your idea to move abroad fits into your long-term goals and your life purpose. Now, one quick way to get a taste of GTD. Write down every single thing that's on your mind that either needs to get done or that may need to get done. Don't worry about doing those things. That's important. Just get them out of your head. You may feel a little overwhelmed from writing all those things down, but you probably also feel a lot lighter. You've just done the first of the five key steps to mastering GTD. And those five key steps are capture, clarify, organize, reflect, and engage. 
a little bit more about each of those. One, capture. Capture everything. Anything you need to act on or might need to act on needs to be captured. Get it out of your head. Get it into the system. Two, clarify. With each thing, you're asking yourself, is this actionable? If it's not actionable, what should you do with it? If it is actionable, what's the next action? More on this soon. Three, organize. Put the thing in the right place. If it's actionable, it goes in your task management system. If you don't need it, it goes in the trash. If you might need it, you store it for reference. Four, reflect. Review and think about the things in your system regularly. How often? Often enough to keep them out of your mind, which helps you trust your trusted system. Five, engage. Do what you intend to do with the things. That might be taking action. That might be not taking action. Whatever action you do take, that's the next action. And so we'll talk about that now. If you take away only one idea from this Getting Things Done book summary, it should be the next action. The next action is what it sounds like. What is the next thing you can do about this thing you're thinking about? For example, I used to write vague items on my to-do list. I'd write mom to remind me mom's birthday was coming up and that I needed to buy her a gift. And look at how many steps removed mom was from the next action. You might think the next action was to buy mom a gift, but it wasn't. Instead, the next action was brainstorm gift ideas for mom. That is a lot easier to act upon than just mom. You might not think it makes a difference, but like closing open loops, identifying the next action saves mental energy. When you do look at your to-do list, you don't have to sit there and wonder what action to take for that vague thing that you have written down. And sometimes you don't need to take action at all, which brings us to the someday maybes list. If you take away only two ideas from this Getting Things Done book summary, it should be the next action and the someday maybes list. Why? Because these are the two ideas that free up the most energy. The next action makes it easier to act. Your someday maybe list makes it easier to not act. Before I knew about someday maybe, I'd make one of two mistakes. I'd either write something down on my to-do list, not realizing I didn't really intend to do it, or I'd recognize that I didn't really intend to do it and so not write it down and thus keep thinking about it. And both of these were obviously the wrong way. Your someday maybes list lets you capture things you would like to do, only it's not the right time or you're not yet sure you want to do them. Because the things you someday or maybe want to do are in your trusted system, you close the loops and you stop thinking about them. But for your someday maybe list to work, you have to review it regularly, which brings us to the weekly review. If you take only three ideas from this Getting Things Done book summary, it should be the next action, someday maybes list, and the weekly review. Because the weekly review is what puts the trusted in trusted system. Remember the five-step process behind GTD. Capture, clarify, organize, reflect, and engage. Capturing, clarifying, and organizing helps you identify what to do and be sure you'll do it. Reflecting, which you do in your weekly review, helps you feel confident nothing is falling through the cracks. Find a time once a week where you consistently have the time and energy to reflect on your life and work. Make sure you've captured, clarified, and organized everything. I do my weekly review on Sunday afternoons. Some people like Fridays. It is really a game-changing habit. And there is your Getting Things Done book summary. Those are the most important ideas behind GTD from my 15 years of using it. There's, of course, a whole book worth of ideas behind the system. I highly recommend you pick up the book at kdv.co slash gtd. Now, honorable mention of ideas from the book include context, projects, and the two-minute rule. Context. Assign a context to your tasks, such as at home or at office. Some to-do items you can only do in certain places. Projects. If you think it's a task, it is often a project. If it takes more than one task to achieve your desired outcome, it's a project. Two-minute rule. If you're clarifying and you come across a next action that will take two minutes or less, 
do it right away. I've been using GTD for more than 15 years. It has helped me write three books, build a business, and travel the world. So if you want to know which tools I count on to get things done, I will instantly send you the tools I count on most if you sign up to my newsletter at kdv.co slash newsletter. My new book, Mind Management, Not Time Management, is available for pre-order. I've relied on getting things done to free up my energy, but for the past decade, I've been perfecting the art of optimizing that energy to be productive when creativity matters. Pre-order Mind Management, Not Time Management today. Get it delivered straight to your Kindle on October 27th when it debuts. Pre-order now at kdv.co slash mind. That is kdv.co slash mind. And thank you for sharing my work with your followers on Instagram. Thank you to We Publish Horror, Run Gazelle Run, and Thomas the J. On Twitter, thank you to Geeko Supremo with the update of the month saying, it seems to me that a liberal mixing of At Cadavy's The Heart to Start with Mind Shift in episode 236 of Love Your Work, Time Worship, would take many creatives a very long way. Yeah, I'm pointing that finger at me, too. The theme music for Love Your Work is At Sea by Dorena from the album About Everything and More by arrangement with Deep Elm Records at deepelm.com. Love Your Work is a production of Cadavy, Inc. <laughs>